Author Sherwood Anderson once wrote, only the few know the sweetness of the twisted apples. It's a wonderful way of saying there's an unappreciated beauty in something ugly. Though, that said, what exactly makes a thing ugly is often a matter of debate, since like pornography, most only know it when they see it. And if my experience is any indication, that definition can change over time. Regardless of any criteria for quantifying ugliness, since beauty is ever in the eye of the beholder, and there's an ass for every seat, every individual keeps their own counsel as well as a private stash of treasures others have shunned. Tasty poisons no one else would dare season their meals with, or stimulating grotesqueries others find too revolting to eye lovingly. In James Schuler's poem, The Trash Book, there's a wonderful sense of not knowing what to consider trash. The poet expresses a similar sentiment to Anderson's twisted apples, insofar as Schuler mentions metaphorically symbolic trash. There's the tree trunk, now a stump, that lamentably knows it will never grow into anything more, never be made into pencils or a yacht. Considering what to paste in the trash book, the poet proposes some grass repurposed as a smear of color, a fragment of a voice misheard, and the persistent hum in one ear. Garbage, refuse, debris, imagery of things easily thrown away are given a different shape when shaded with deeper meaning. Schuler worked as the typist for his friend, the poet W.H. Auden. However, he found the confines of Auden's formal poetry distasteful. So he sought to create something more conversational. Trash books certainly reads like someone thinking out loud. This provides a drift to the writing. Each metaphorical image is like a dreamlike notion passed without lingering, much the same way so many glance over the garbage seen daily. No time to stop and think about the inner turmoil of tree stumps lamenting what they can never be. No hesitation ignoring grass, save for its color. Perhaps, though, a moment to hesitate. Consider the young lady riding a cardboard moon as she sips her miller's beer. Written for Joe Brainerd, the poem takes a cue from Brainerd's visual works as well as Kurt Schwitter. Schwitter, in particular, fascinated James Schuler in the way that he transformed debris and refuse into artistic collages, junk given a value no one else could see. As such, both artists inspired the notion of a trash book, which Schuler described as a scrapbook you put trash in, which is not the same as garbage. We all find that treasurable trash in our own private places. Some we can share with others, while a few locations remain private oases, spots no one else thinks to look for pleasures. Consider the poem The Penny Candy Store Beyond the L by Lawrence Ferlinghetti. It opens by saying, The Penny Candy Store Beyond the L is where I first fell in love with unreality. It's not hard to imagine others going by such a shop without ever seeing it, let alone it having the same effect it did on Ferlinghetti. While a penny candy store may not sound like a trash heap, it's the notion of how places influence people that matters, that influence making them loved, despised, or simply unseen. Trash is defined as discarded matter, or a person or people regarded as being of low social standing. A place can easily fit into the latter definition, but the point is, trash is perceived as possessing no value. It's something we don't want to look at or waste time thinking about, so casually disregard it. Thrown away, passed by, ignored, unconsidered, it's all the same thing, hence the importance of Ferlinghetti's peace. It reminds us of the marvelous spots that have opened us up to magnificent beauties, and though yours may not be this or other such penny candy shops, the point of the poem is to cast a mind back to such places, whether they're a dive bar, stretch a road, a secret fishing spot, or a hidden trail. Consider Sarah Teasdale, who wrote four sonnets expressing her love for the city of New York. Her sentiment may not have been much appreciated by poets of the Romantic era, who regarded nature more highly than any urban metropolis. They saw beauty and meaning in green grass, sunshine, and rivers that others like Sarah Teasdale see in brick, lamplight, and gutter streams. Where she saw something marvelous in the lights of New York, others have easily seen nothing worth praising at all. When Ambrose Bierce wrote The Devil's Dictionary, he defined magnificent as having a grandeur or splendor superior to that which the spectator is accustomed, as the ears of an ass to a rabbit, or the glory of a glowworm to a maggot. 
One of the beauties of the ugly trash people encounter is that it stabs someone in the eye. Consequently, it can't be ignored and throws things into stark contrast. In John Keats, a song of opposites, a variety of opposites are juxtaposed against one another. In the poem, an infant plays with a skull. There's reference to the sweetness of pain and dancing music, music sad, both together sane and mad. Feelings people would rather avoid, sensations shunned for safety's sake, and notions one doesn't initially see looking at certain things. It shows a connectivity between things which seem dissimilar. Infants are new life, but life is inevitably linked to death, hence the skull. Happiness gives way to sadness, and pain refreshes the sense of being alive. It calls to mind Emily Dickinson's Tis Opposites Entice, wherein deformed men ponder grace, and the blind admire sight, while beggars long for a life easy enough to permit play. That last one hits the point home hardest of all. Things taken for granted, such as being free from a grind, these things lose value over time. However, opposites entice a sense of magnificence. They become signposts, reminding one to value what's been depreciated, and when something loses enough value, it becomes trash, something people can casually dispose of, only to miss powerfully when it's gone. Everything is ugly to someone, commenting on a passage by William Wordsworth. Painter, poet, and printmaker, William Blake once remarked that reading it caused him a bowel complaint which nearly killed him. That certainly sounds like an ugly bit of poetry Mr. Blake would be happy to throw on the literary junk heap. It's important, though, to understand such reactions are individual, regardless of how many people share them. Your treasures are trash, and vice versa depending on the viewer. So be sure to explore the junkyard orchards. There are many sweet, twisted apples others have left behind. <laughs>